Hey everybody, how's everyone doing today? Hope everyone's doing well out there. Uh, in this video, I just wanted to show some of the records that I've been spinning lately that I really was getting into in a big way. Uh, I did a video like this uh, a few weeks ago and it was so fun putting that video together. I thought I'd just do another one for shits and giggles. Why not? So anyway, here we are. Uh, this is what I've been listening to lately. Uh, first record is from Steven Wilson, and it's called Catalog, Preserve, and Amass. Uh, it's a live record, live recording, taken from his first solo tour of Europe uh, in support of his album, uh, Grace for Drowning. And this was a record store day release, I believe, last year. And it is an excellent live recording. Uh, love this album to death. Some I don't listen to all that often, but when I pull it out, boy, it delivers. I love this album. Uh, the live tracks on here, uh, on side one is Index, uh, Deform to Form a Star, No Part of Me, make up side one. And uh, the song Raider 2 takes up the entire second side of the record uh, because it's quite a long song, but almost 24 minutes long. Really long, uh, uh, really long song, but fantastic song as well. Ooh, excuse me. And just a superior live recording. Love the mix on this recording. Uh, he would later put out a live uh, Blu-ray and DVD uh, from that tour, and and I have that as well. Uh, but this is just a nice piece of gold along with a live DVD. Really love this album. And I also love Stephen Wilson's solo recordings. Uh, he's really coming to his own as a, as a solo artist. Now, obviously, when you're a solo artist, you're the boss. You know, whatever you want to write and, and perform, it's, it's all up to you. Uh, you're basically the captain of your own ship. Uh, but I, so I'm sure he's enjoying that. But to be honest with you, I really miss Porcupine Tree. I really wish Porcupine Tree would get together and uh, hopefully write another album and do another tour. I really miss me some Tree, but I do love his solo records. But it just makes me miss Porcupine Tree. Anyway, let's go on to the next record. Uh, Peter Gabriel, Security. I was spinning this last week, and I'm a huge Peter Gabriel fan. I love all his albums and CDs. I have quite a few concert videos of his as well. Uh, but this is always the forgotten record, at least for me it is. Uh, this is the one I have not listened to in a long time. And, you know, songs like Rhythm of the Heat, I Have the Touch, the family and the fishing net shock the monkey everybody knows lay your hands on me I mean there's some great songs on here that just blow me away and it sounds great on vinyl too I mean, this album the mix on this record really comes just rumbles their way through the speakers it's really quite a powerful mix on this recording um, I took a picture while I was listening to it I took a picture of it uh, next to my turntable and posted it on Facebook vinyl community and uh, Rob Elovox uh, basically told me the little story behind this hype sticker. I was lucky to find a copy that still had it. And basically, I guess David Geffen made a big deal about Peter Gabriel not naming his records. He wanted him to do that on this one. Of course, Gabriel doesn't do that. And uh, they, a compromise was made, and the, the name of the album was actually put on, was on the hype sticker. And most people just ripped off the shrink wrap when they got the album and threw it away. And, started listening to it and all you saw was just the picture and it said Peter Gabriel in the, in the corner. Uh, so it was, from what I understand it's pretty rare to find one with a original hype sticker on it and I got lucky. So but this is a fantastic album and um, I, I gotta go to this record more often because I love the music on this. Alright, next up is The Church Gold Afternoon Fix. A great band, this is a fantastic record. And a very entertaining listen. Always loved this album. Uh, my favorite album from the church is Starfish. Uh, that's a classic record, but this one uh, is right up there with it. Um, I really love the song Metropolis and Terra Nova King and the song Essence that closes out side one. It's just like a wonderful listen this album is. Uh, and it's funny too because this is, I gotta thank the VC for for getting me to listen to the church. Um, I knew of them from the 80s, but never bought any of their, their CDs or anything like that. And it wasn't until I got in the VC I started 
uh, given them my attention and started buying a lot of their albums to realize how good of a band they are. And it's like, man, why didn't I pay more attention back in the day when when they were an active band? Well, they still are, but that this is when the 80s when they were really big. And for some reason, I just overlooked them. And so thanks to the VC, I'm discovering bands that I overlooked back in the day, and this was one of them. A real nice discovery. Uh, I love the music from the church, and this album is awesome. We all know I'm a Rush fan, so I had to throw a Rush record in there somewhere. The last time I did one of these videos was 2112. This time it is Grace Under Pressure. One of my favorite albums from the Rush keyboard era, this and Power Windows, I think I thought were really good albums. Uh, and for me, even though I love 2112 and uh, Fly By Night and those, albums, those early records, I, I really get excited when I hear the songs from this keyboard era of Rush, uh, between the late to uh, mid, uh, early to late 80s, where they were using a lot more keyboards in their sound. Uh, and this album in particular was just awesome. Um, I'm trying to find my favorite. The Ending Within has to be my favorite song on here. Because uh, I always debate it's either that or uh, Distant Early Warning or Between the Wheels as my favorite song, but I, I think it's the enemy within. I really love just the rhythm of that song, Neil Perth's playing on the drums, and and uh, the things Getty Lee decides to play on keyboards. I, I love, I love, I love what they what, what they brought to the synthesizer with their music. Uh, I just like the way they, they uh, arrange their synthesizer arrangements. It was, on this record, it was my favorite. Um, as well as Between the Wheels. Uh, another one was Red Lenses. That's a great song. Red, Red Lenses was, was another favorite as well. Um, this is just a great album. And it's the one I think a lot of Rush fans dismiss uh, because there's just way too many keyboards on this album. Uh, you got one of the best power trios and they're just drowned in keyboards, but it was the 80s, and that's, you know, the 80s was about synthesizers, and uh, they, they did it really well, and I, I really love the music on this album. Pull this one out, haven't heard this one in a while, and and yeah, shame on me for ignoring it as long as I did, but uh, Talking Heads, Fear of Music, <laughs> such a classic album, just, just a badass release, I love this album. Um, I remember when I was first looking for this record and couldn't find it for the life of me. And so I found this copy in a little shop in Sacramento that's no longer open. Sadly, it closed its doors. Um, I, uh, it's a great copy. I mean, the cover looked almost brand new. And it had the original insert in it, like so. And the vinyl was in great shape. I mean, it took me forever to find a good copy of this album. Uh, I think it took me like two months, three months, something like that. And, you know, I know I could just go online and just you know, look for someone selling it and <clears throat> just uh, send them a payment and uh, through PayPal and it's mine in the mail within a week, couple weeks later. But something about the thrill of the hunt. Uh, just makes it all that special, you know. I, I guess it's a grail in a way, um, because this record's not that easy to find around here. Uh, at least I'm not a good copy of this. So when I actually found it, when I went to the store, just kind of thumbed through their um, recent arrivals section. This was in there, and I just not only did it just jump at me, you know, I was like, oh my god, they have it, but they had such a beautiful copy of it, and. Then after that, and I bought it, of course, and then after that, I was seeing it all over parts of town. <laughs> it's, it's like when you finally find a, I guess, a grail, something that was hard to find, and you finally buy it, then all of a sudden you start seeing it everywhere. Like, well, where, where was all this luck three months ago when I was really hard up to find the album? But anyway, um, killer, killer uh, body of music, great album, and I was really blessed to find a great copy. So I really love this album. Oh, of course, I'm going to show some Floyd metal. Um, one night I was just in a mellow mood and I really had to hear the song Fearless. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like all the other songs too one of these days, but Fearless it has to be my favorite song on this album. Just the vibe of that song. So laid back and 
just a nice song. I, I really love that song. I always, it always makes me happy when I spin that song. Um, and here's a picture of the boys. I'm sure everybody has this album in their collection. It's, there are a lot of Floyd collectors here. This was on the Harvest label. So, really nice, a really nice copy too. Even though the, the cover looks kind of beat up with a lot of ring wear, the vinyl surprisingly is in very, very good shape. Um, of course, Slide 2 is a great, you know, a great journey <laughs> with echoes, but uh, Fearless has always been my favorite song on this album. Uh, that makes the album for me. Every time I see this cover, I, I, Fearless is like the, the song that instantly pops in my head. And uh, I usually throw it on the charge table and go straight to Fearless, and then start from the beginning of Slide 1. <laughs> Uh, this is a beautiful song, one of my favorite Pink Floyd songs. A uh, song that doesn't get a lot of hype because everybody likes Comfortably Numb and Hey You. But, and of course, it's fun from Dark Side of the Moon. So this song is kind of a, this song, I think sometimes this album is a bit of a forgotten song and forgotten album. But um, it's, it's, it's really fun sitting with this album. Uh, it takes you on a journey, boy, it does it ever. <laughs> Another one that I was really getting a kick out of was OMD's uh, Architecture and Morality. Um, ever since LJ sent me a documentary on the history of synth pop, I, I would, I, that, that just started my uh, obsession to get synth pop records, and this was one of them that I had to have. Found this in a store, which surprised the hell out of me, uh, because this is not an easy album to find. And, I mean, I had to pay, like, I think it was, it was only like seven bucks for this album, which is not a lot. Uh, and it was a gold stamp promo. I don't know if you could see it in the corner there. So a gold stamp promo of, of uh, Architecture and Morality. And, of course, you know, the favorite songs on here are obviously going to be Joan of Arc, the two Joan of Arc songs. Um, the New Stone Age, pretty good. Souvenir was a good single. But the whole album, you got it's one of those songs I, I really like just listening to it from start to finish. It, it, this is a this is an album that takes you on a good journey as well. It came with the original insert and it is on the Epic label. So there is my copy of it. Uh, OMD's brand of synth pop I really loved. Uh, I started digging through their older albums, their best. And they inspired me to get the best of OMD, and then I got one of their concert videos. Really loved the uh, the arrangement of synth, what they did with synthesizers as well. Um, I, they were one of the first bands that was doing synth pop back in the day. And you know, I first heard of OMD through that song from Pretty and Pink, if you leave, thinking that was probably their best song or their most popular song. I mean, it's still a good song. But it, 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 it is not their strongest song. A lot of their strongest songs can be found on this record and the one before it. Because uh, their first single was the song of Electricity. That was a great song. And on this song, I think they kind of marriaged uh, hit singles with experimental uh, synth-pop tracks. And, and that mixture was done very well on this album. So such a joy to listen to this one. Really love this one, especially the ending track, the beginning and the end. It's just a great closer to a great album. And speaking of great albums, here's another one I really love. Uh, Brave from the band Marillion. Uh, there's, Marillion is a lot like Genesis. Uh, the fans are divided by who is the lead singer. <laughs> and Marillion kind of fell into that. Uh, the original lead singer was Fish. And then when he left the band, he, he was replaced by a guy named Steve Hogarth. And Hogarth, uh, of the Hogarth era, I think this is my favorite album from when he was the lead singer. So, and it's a two record set. I'll show you the gatefold here. This sounds fantastic on vinyl. For years I've had the CD and now their online store was finally selling the record. There we go. And this is a great collection. Um, like I said, sounds amazing on vinyl. And I'll just show you the uh, custom labels here. Because the custom labels look really nice. 
Just a fantastic album. Uh, the only problem I have with this album, though, is after I listen to it, it seems like I'm just wiped out afterwards. Um, it, 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 it's a demanding listen, you know? It's, it's, by the time you're done with it, uh, you, you feel like you ran a marathon <laughs> with this music, but it's fantastic music. And I've always been a, band, a fan of this band, and I was introduced to them by a friend who burned me a lot of their CDs, and and this was one particular one that he burned for me, and my God, it's just, the song Runaway is a song that always hooks me. Uh, it hooked me originally, and it still blows me away. Most I've heard it about a hundred times, the song Runaway, and it just blows me away. It's one of those, one of those ballads that starts off kind of small and quiet, and it builds as it, as it progresses. And it progresses to something quite powerful, so. And this whole album kind of does that in a way, too. There's a lot of dynamics in this recording, and I love that album cover. It's such a creepy, sad album cover. Um, but the music is just so uh, good theater rock, I guess you could say. Uh, it is a concept album, and it's a good theater rock. Now, the dynamics are really strong on this one. One of my favorites on this band. All right, well, that's going to do it uh, for the latest one of my spinning stuff. Um, gotten a lot of new subscribers since my last video. So welcome, everyone, to the channel. Hope you love what, you're, what I'm showing. And uh, leave me some comments, and uh, we'll get a little chat going. Hope everyone's having a good weekend, and I'll see all of you at the next video.